So thanks again for coming, and uh, the graduates will be here in just a minute. It has been with their support, encouragement, and dedication that the class of 2012 has made it this far. At this time, please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Mr. Joe Maselli, Principal of Bullen High School, which will introduce the top five scholars of the class of 2012. It is my distinct honor to introduce you to the top five students from the class of 2012. The following students, please stand and we'll hold our applause for all of our five. Danielle Kerr. Olivia Muro. Nicholas Caracchio. Class salutatorian, Nevin Olampu Adams. And your class valedictorian, Sarah Harmon. by a group of teachers and based on the submission of the student essays, Kelsey Shota will give the senior address. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for being here with me today to celebrate the 2012 graduating class of Bolton High School. <laughs> why I am the one here speaking with you today. It's because I'm the best looking, and I guess they figured if you have to listen to somebody, they might as well give you something good to look at. <laughs> if I had to pick a few words to describe our past 
past four years here at Bolton High School, they would have to be demolition, new principals, and failed fundraising. <laughs> now as awful as this all may sound, I believe that it was quite enjoyable and I hope that my classmates would agree. As David Brinkley once said, a successful person is one who can lay a firm foundation with the bricks that others have thrown at them. Our first year at Bolton High School took place in the old school where it had been renovated. Some called this a homey environment. I don't know about you, but at my house, I have a door on the bathroom, and for the most part, I don't have to wait through water to get to a toilet. <laughs> my first thought would I walk in there was, why is it getting so wet? Did Hurricane Irene just blow through? By our junior year, the renovations were well underway, and to my amazement, the disgusting tile floors didn't look much worse after they were torn up. Much of what I remember from English class is the drilling coming from just outside the window. As a matter of fact, not only could I tell you the entirety of the literary elements of the Book Beloved, but I could also tell you how to drill a geothermal well. <laughs> the point is not that we all constantly complained about having to go to school, having to go to school in a place that was less than perfect. The point is that we managed. We kept our spirits high and knew that if we stayed positive in the moment, that the rewards would be magnificent. And that is exactly what has happened. Now we have an amazing school filled with even more amazing people. In life, we are all going to have to overcome difficult situations. We do not have to let these tough situations affect us negatively. I hope that as my fellow classmates and I go off to college or into the workforce, we can remember this lesson. Paul K. Smith was the principal here our freshman year. He soon realized that he could not handle us for another three years and was demoted to superintendent of schools. <laughs> Sophomore year, we had another principal who did not return. <laughs> then came Mr. Maselli. I guess his outlook on the whole situation was that we were going to be gone in another year, so he might as well stick around. <laughs> he did just finish his second year here, but not without taking a couple of months off due to a medical issue. But we all know he was really off at Bora Bora swimming with dolphins. <laughs> We're all thankful that he is healthy and here with us today. A common theme for these past couple of years has been change. We are all going to experience change at some point. Some of us may change jobs, some of us may change schools. Some of us might just change our hair color. Whatever the change may be, we will need to adapt. We need to take change and stride. A quote by Marilyn Monroe states, sometimes good things fall apart so that better things can fall together. No matter how unprecedented change may seem at the time, do not get discouraged and know that things will work themselves out. Now I am just taking a guess here, but I would say that the class of 1973 probably raised more money than we did. Sure, we sold around six packets of dip, a few butter braids here and there, and a couple of pizzas, but we did not have a lot of money. Our financial status was probably comparable to that of the United States government. <laughs> However, even though we did not have a lot of money, we worked with what we had. We had a great senior outing at High Meadows and an amazing prom at Rubinas, and we saved even more money because we could just walk there instead of having to rent a little walk. <laughs> We didn't let the fact that we had little money decide how we were going to celebrate our senior year. When we have our class reunion at Georgina's 20 years from now, there is no doubt that I will still look great and be on the cover of every major magazine. <laughs> India Rice will be the founder of several different vegan restaurants throughout the United States. William Wagner will be the head of a multi-million dollar company of some sort. And the rest of the overachievers in our grade will be living at home with their parents. <laughs> like 85% of college graduates today. No matter what we ended up doing with our lives, the lessons we learned here at Bolton High School are invaluable. We learned that if you go to school in a place that is run down, not to worry, because in two years, you'll have a brand new school with giant plasma televisions hanging in the lobby. Even though things are not always going to seem perfect, do not get discouraged. Ellen DeGeneres once said, my life is perfect, even when it's not. With that, I would like to thank you all for listening, and those of you who are sleeping the whole time, thank you for not snoring too loud. <laughs>
Our next speaker is the salutatorian of the class of 2012, Nevin Olenhu Adams. I would like to start with a quote from Margaret Thatcher, the former British Prime Minister, which I believe has a lot of truth. Look at the day when you are supremely satisfied at the end. It's not a day when you lounge around doing nothing. It's when you've had everything to do and done it. As humans, we often get caught up in the notion that the best days are relaxing ones. A day spent lying on the beach, sleeping in until noon, watching hours of television, and Facebook stalking people we barely know. I do not wish to suggest that these kinds of days are not enjoyable or not necessary, for they most certainly are. However, I look at Thatcher's idea of a supremely satisfying day as something that, in its proper form, should come naturally if we follow our dreams in life. This, my fellow classmates, is my goal for you. That in your future endeavors, you will find that the days when you feel you are most satisfied are the days when you've had everything to do and done it. The days when you were the busiest. Although we will have different ways of achieving this, may it be in our careers, in raising our children, in serving our communities, or most likely in some combination of the three, I believe there is no better goal in life. There is nothing more important than finding a place in life in which our busiest days are our best. I am the first to admit that pursuing this goal is a hard thing to do. Next year I will be studying architecture, an industry that, conveniently, has one of the highest unemployment rates for recent college grads. I will be one of those 85%. Hopefully not. However, I am willing to take that risk because as far as I can tell, being an architect is the career that will make my busiest days my best. However, I know that it is not just this career, career that will do this for me. As Oprah Winfrey said in her commencement speech this year at Spelman University, service and significance equals success. In order to find this place where our busiest days can be our best, it is imperative that what we are doing serves others in some way and has significance to us. Architecture is a career in which I find significance because I can use it to innovate and design buildings that better protect the environment something I'm passionate about. This is a career that inspires me, so that I can serve others and myself, so that I can make my best contribution to our society, so that my busiest days can be my best. For examples of people who have already made this choice in their career, we, don't, we do not have to look outside this ceremony. I cannot help but think of teachers like Mrs. Cordero, who runs all of our student activities, plans our ski trip, and supervises the marathon, Mr. Smith, who coaches cross country, runs National Honor Society, and is never weary of planning four hours of extra class time at night for AP students. Or Ms. Carvalho, who spends hours and hours directing a musical production every year. And all these people put in all this extra time while teaching five classes during the day. I would also be remiss if I did not mention someone like Mrs. Christiana, who is often still at the school at five or six o'clock in the evening, and even comes in on Saturdays sometimes to make sure our college applications get in on time. These are just a few examples of the numerous teachers and staff at Bowen High School who chose their career because they find significance in serving us, the students, so that their busiest days can be their best. In our class, many of us have also, have also made the decision to make our high school days busy by taking difficult courses, playing sports, participating in extracurricular activities, taking on extensive senior demo projects, or working outside of school. While some of us were less satisfied and happy after busy days in high school, I also know that many of us were not, especially during senior year with college and dreams of independence pulling in our spirits. However, as we graduate today, we are entering a new phase of our lives. This is our time to go out into the world and make choices about the paths we will take. In college, we have the ability to choose an area of study and take courses that inspire us, in which we find significance. In the workforce, we have the option to choose career paths that do the same. Not only does choosing a path that inspires and interests us lead to happiness in life, it also ensures that we are doing the most we can for our society, because it is so much easier to have an impact doing something that inspires you, something you find significant. So, for your own sake and for society's sake, let this be your goal for whatever, whatever path you take in life. Be inspired, be productive, find significance, and find a place in life in which your busiest days are your best. Thank you. Please welcome the
the valedictorian of the class of 2012, Sarah Harmon. Faculty members, fellow students, family and friends, welcome. Can you believe it? This day has finally come. We've awaited this day anxiously, crossing days off the calendar, and now that it is here, we face new questions and new opportunities. We'll be leaving friends who inspire us and teachers who have been our mentors, but it's exhilarating to think that we are moving forward with our lives. On a personal note, I would like to thank my teachers, friends, and family for guiding me and preparing me for the challenges that are ahead. Their support has helped me to build a stable foundation. It's been an incredible four years. Bolton High School certainly provides a strong education, but it's about much more than that, and this is due to the faculty, staff, and students. The whole environment here is one of positivity and encouragement. For instance, freshman year, I remember receiving letters in the mail from Mr. Paul K. Smith, who was the principal at the time. Each letter would come after the close of a quarter and would acknowledge my recent efforts in school. I remember thinking how kind it was that Mr. Smith took the time to send these letters to the students. Looking back now, I believe these letters represented more than a simple act of kindness. They symbolized just a fragment of the support and encouragement that I would receive here at Bolton High School. I consider myself very fortunate to be a member of a small high school. Small high schools give students the opportunity to form relationships with the faculty and staff. In a way, we form our own little community. Our teachers not only further our intellectual growth, but they also come out and watch us at sports games, drama productions, induction ceremonies, as well as band and chorus concerts. From a personal standpoint, I know that I really appreciate their support at these events. Our teachers really know us. I have had several teachers for at least two of my four years here at Bolton High. Mrs. Larchelle is one teacher I had both freshman and senior year, the two opposite sides of the spectrum. On the last day of classes, she explained her job using an interesting analogy. She said that she breaks the stallions and sends off the thoroughbreds. After thinking about this, I thought that this analogy was clever and very true. As a freshman, I came into high school with many questions. But now, as a senior, I feel prepared for college. The cumulative efforts of a caring faculty and staff have prepared us for any obstacles that we may face in the future. Being a part of Bolton High opens many opportunities. By participating in a diverse array of activities, I've been exposed to many different skill sets. While my coaches and teammates have taught me to always give my best effort and to be a team player, my teachers and academic courses have also shaped my character. Mr. Smith's passion about running inspires students to be dedicated to what they love. I mean, just look at how many students he has on his team trying to earn the infamous award, the Painted Rock. Mr. Kaiser's transformation from teacher to coach in AP Calculus allows the students to start forming study habits that will help them in college. The class that probably influenced me the most this past year was AP English. Mrs. Laura Schell shared with us her love for literature as we covered a wide range of genres, including satire, Shakespeare, American drama, and poetry. While each story is unique with its own plot and characters, the lesson behind the majority of the stories can be summed up with one main theme, the theme of self-realization. As a student in high school, I believe that this theme applies most frequently in high school students' daily lives. For me, high school was an opportunity to grow and to figure out the type of person I wanted to be in my life. This is why I believe I was able to connect with Charlotte Bronte's novel, Jane Eyre, a build on this roman, The Story of a Life. In the novel, Jane goes out into the world and creates a life for herself. She perseveres through difficult times, and she never loses sight of her goals. By the end, Jane has transformed herself from an unloved orphan into an independent woman with a family of her own. Jane had the courage to follow her conscience and her dreams. We can too. The story of Jane Eyre's journey reminds me of my senior quote, which is, why do we try so hard to fit in if we are born to stand out? Even though it may be hard to define our own paths, we have to have the courage to make our own decisions. We have to learn who we are so that we can make our own mark on the world. Bolton High has given us a great start on our team left. This is my wish. These past four years have been great. I wish you all the best of luck wherever life may take you. Congratulations, everyone. We did it.